Hey everybody, this is Matthew Pose of Pose Acoustics. Okay, I'm answering questions and uh, these are the Q&As that come in. I've already talked about how that works. So again, keep when we, when we put it out there, keep asking and uh, keep putting your questions out there and we'll answer them as we can. And if you guys want to send a little money, like I said, that, that really helps out. Part of, admittedly, part of why I don't always get on these as quickly as I should is I get busy with other stuff that helps to pay the bills and summer camps and everything else. So, uh, Chandan 6119, or I hope I said that right. In a two-row theater, there will always be a bass boost, 20 to 50 hertz region in the second row, usually two to three feet from the back wall. If we EQ it for the first row, there will be a bass boost in the second row. What will be the ideal solution, considering MLP is in the first row? Um, so a couple things. First is, it's not absolutely true that the bass boost will happen in the second row there's a couple of assumptions that are being put in here, and one of those assumptions is that in a two-row theater, the room is always small enough that you actually have to have the second row be two to three feet from the back wall. That's actually not desirable and not technically true. So when we're designing rooms and people give us a certain size space, one of the things we do, and this actually answers your question indirectly, is we think about the compromises we're willing to make. So if we do what you've said, what we've done is created overflow seats that are going to have a, uh, a serious compromise, which is that the base will be boosted because you're too close to the boundary. Now, again, I'm going to go into why there's some exceptions to that, but what, there is some truth to what you said, and so I want to talk about that. And those seats are always going to sound worse than the other row. So then what you do is you optimize for this row and accept the loss in that row. My room is exactly what you've described. And had I not been using waveforming, I do and would have that problem, which is that the base is heavier near the wall. So there's a couple of things here. The reason why it gets heavier near the wall is that the wall itself is a solid boundary. In my room, it's a very solid boundary because that's a sound isolation wall, so there's lots of extra mass in it. And um, you get a base buildup basically up against boundaries like that because the you get to be a high pressure point when you're up near the boundary. The other thing that happens is that you get, so there's boundary loading. Um, in my case, you're also closer to subwoofers, which doesn't matter all that much, but it, enough I mean, it can affect it a little bit. So in my system, you get about six to nine dB of bass boost uh, because of that. It's significant. So what would be the better solution? Actually, it would be to get rid of that second row that's back there and put in a bar row instead because that pushes the seats way forward. Then the seats are basically just past here. Now they're like probably seven or eight feet from the back wall instead of just two or three feet because we've pushed them forward so much. So that's actually what we would recommend in a design scenario with somebody is say, if you want the best sound for every seat in the house, we would prefer those overflow seats to be less comfortable but better sounding. But people have different choices and at the end of the day home theaters are loaded with compromises and you have to make a decision for yourself do you want better sound for every seat or do you want to accept a row that has bad sound or worse sound but um, more comfortable okay you could also make the room bigger and then you're able to get all the seats i mean really be really nice to have all the seats like two meters from every boundary, right? That would be really nice. Six and a half, seven feet, something like that. Even six feet if you want to stick to, you know, Imperial. Um, but I know you guys, and I don't, I'm not that different. If my room, for instance, was 10 feet longer, I'd probably throw a third row in. Now, a good reason not to do that, you probably aren't going to have the ceiling height to handle the riser for doing that, because if you've got each riser at the right height, about 14 inches roughly between each riser, sometimes more, depending on the pitch you need to have. So if you're at 14 inches, that means the second riser you have for the third row of seats is 28 inches. So do you have enough ceiling height to maintain roughly seven feet plus 28 inches? So what you're talking about is basically needing to have probably, I mean, it's nine and a half feet, so 10 feet. Now I have nine and a half feet here, but you remember there's a projector. So really what you need is closer to 12 feet in order to handle the projector, unless the projector is going in another room. All right, so then I told you that's not always true. So again, the base buildup actually happens as a result of boundary loading because of the way we typically handle base in a room. However, with the new active base systems, you're able to cancel out base 
within a meter of a wall so that there is even base everywhere within one meter of, of a boundary in the room. And the waveforming approach that Trunov uses is the most successful at doing that. And what that does is you have a base array in the front, uh, a minimum of two, but four plus is better yet. And then in the back, a minimum of two, but again, if you can go with three or four, that can have some benefits. And then it basically creates a planar wave, or a steered wave at least, that avoids the boundaries until the back wall, where you're going to have buildup, except that there's a counter signal being sent there that cancels that out. And it does it within a meter of the wall. So if you're using waveforming, there actually would not be higher levels of base in the back. Now, my system isn't set up quite correctly, and because of that, I'm not getting perfect effects. However, it did mean that instead of having 6 to 9 dB of boost, I'm getting between 3 and 5 dB. Way less than without it, but not as good as it could be. And I've seen the results with other systems, and they are it is better when it's set up correctly, a lot better. Dirac uh, Art can actually do the same thing in theory, but the setup has to be right, and I've had more mixed results. And I'm hoping to play with it a lot more to kind of figure that out, and I keep telling you guys I'm going to do that, and I keep talking to the guys at Dirac about how I'm going to do that, but it's just a matter of time and and... I actually don't have a storm processor here right now, so it's a little harder. So I hope that answered your question. Um, I think the gist of it I'm telling you is I don't, I would never compromise the main listening position to make that back row better. I, I look at it as you've made a choice with the location of the back row in that room to accept worse seats, but you always have to maintain the MLP. Now, with presets, if you really want to, you could always have something where like the front row is worse, but the back row is better. But what you're talking about is you're cutting the base back there it means you're gonna have to cut the base here too. And if you're off by like 9 dB, what are you gonna do here? So hopefully that was helpful. Hope you enjoyed this and keep listening. I got more coming.